We continue today with chapter 26, where sin has left. Forgiveness is this world's equivalent of heaven's justice. It translates the world of sin into a simple world where justice can be reflected from beyond the gate, behind which total lack of limits lie. Nothing in boundless love could need forgiveness. That is why charity within the world gives way to simple justice past the gate that opens into heaven. No one forgives unless he has believed in sin and still believes that he has much to be forgiven. Forgiveness thus becomes the means by which he learns he has done nothing to forgive. Forgiveness always rests upon the one who offers it until he sees himself as needing it no more. And thus is he returned to his real function of creating, which his forgiveness offers him again. Forgiveness turns the world of sin into a world of glory, wonderful to see. Each flower shines in light, and every bird sings of the joy of heaven. There is no sadness, and there is no parting here, for everything is totally forgiven, and what has been forgiven must join, for nothing stands between to keep them separate and apart. The sinless must perceive that they are one, for nothing stands between to push the other off, and in the space that sin left vacant do they join as one, in gladness recognizing what is part of them has not been kept apart and separate. The holy place on which you stand is but the space that sin has left. And here you see the face of Christ arising in its place. Who could behold the face of Christ and not recall his Father as he really is? Who could fear love and stand upon the ground where sin has left a place for heaven's altar to rise and tower far above the world and reach beyond the universe to touch the heart of all creation? What is heaven but a song of gratitude and love and praise by everything created to the source of its creation? The holiest of altars is set where once sin was believed to be. And here does every light of heaven come to be rekindled and increased in joy. For here is what was lost restored to them, and all their radiance made whole again. Forgiveness brings no little miracles to lay before the gate of heaven. Here the Son of God himself comes to receive each gift that brings him nearer to his home. Not one is lost, and none is cherished more than any other. Each reminds him of his Father's love as surely as the rest. And each one teaches him that what he feared he loves the most. What but a miracle could change his mind, so that he understands that love cannot be feared? What other miracle is there but this? And what else need there be to make the space between you disappear? Where sin once was perceived, will rise a world that will become an altar to the truth, and you will join the lights of heaven there, and sing their song of gratitude and praise. And as they come to you to be complete, so will you go with them. For no one hears the song of heaven and remains without a voice that adds its power to the song, and makes it sweeter still. And each one joins the singing at the altar that was raised within the tiny spot that sin proclaimed to be its own. And what was tiny, then, has soared into a magnitude of song in which the universe has joined with but a single voice. This tiny spot of sin that stands between you and your brother still is holding back the happy opening of heaven's gate. How little is the hindrance that withholds the wealth of heaven from you, and how great will be the joy in heaven when you join the mighty chorus to the love of God. And from the workbook, 
Lesson 203 I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. I call upon God's name and on my own. The name of God is my deliverance from every thought of evil and of sin because it is my own as well as his. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. Amen.